Okay, so I'm uh, Dr. Elizabeth English. I've been teaching mindfulness here at the university in a mindfulness program almost a decade, which started with a wonderful research program. Although those of you who read The Guardian last Saturday might have seen that the university is actually stopping the centralised mindfulness program, which of course I'm very sad about, but different colleges are picking it up um, sort of independently. Good, so here I am after a class. Uh, I, I think the picture's a little bit too small to test you on which college it is. If anybody's uh, good on brickwork, that's Magdalen College, where they put it this wonderful, uh, big, um, irresistible uh, <laughs> deck chair one time, sort of uh, in Michaelmas term. I thought it was so lovely. So uh, the students and I had fun with that. Now, I have brought sleep into my uh, teaching, and it was into the researched programme. Um, but I just thought I'd say a little bit about why I'm so uh, interested in sleep. I guess it's something that we all wish for, uh, a really lovely night's sleep. Um, put your hand up if you've had a really lovely night's sleep in the last fortnight, perhaps. Oh, good. So some people, I'm so pleased to hear that, yes. Now, um, my particular passion for sleep is because I had a period of insomnia, uh, oh, 20 years ago or so, uh, coincide with a difficult time in my life. And I tried to get back to sleep using various sort of you know, usual ways and didn't manage. And then I thought of putting together a couple of different sorts of mindfulness practice, which I was practicing and fond of. And I hit upon a way, I found a way to kind of get myself back to sleep. If you like, at will, I sort of learned how to do it. I learned that sort of entry into sleep. And um, it took me a while to learn. It took, I taught myself over some months, I would say. And since then, I've been blessed with wonderful sleep and I can go to sleep when I choose. So it's something I love to share. I'm passionate about it. And as my role at the university is changing, I thought, well, now's the time to really focus on that sleep project, which I've been wanting to do more with for so long. So I'm just starting a book. I think what I'm saying is, isn't something I've read or heard elsewhere, although people do recommend mindfulness, the particular approach. So I'm going to share just a snippet of that with you today. And I'm really hoping that um, even from the snippet, you'll go away with the practice. You go with something to practice. I really believe this. There isn't a quick fix for sleep, especially if it's been a long-term problem. But it's something we need to kind of just get into our systems. So hopefully that will come through the, uh, the presentation as I give it today. The wonders and benefits of sleep. I'm not going to give you a, a lecture on the health, health benefits of sleep or how vital it is for our health, our, our well-being, our uh, diet and everything. That, that information is kind of quite well known. It's becoming more well known and it's out there. It's also fairly scary if you don't sleep very well because you think, help, uh, this is what all the problems it's causing. So um, what I am going to do is to look at... Uh, well, in a sense, the how. I'm really, that's what I'm fascinated by. And that's what my, in a way, my speciality is in you know, how. How do we manage? So I see there being four challenges that we can just touch on today. If you like, these are going to be the four chapters of my forthcoming book. Uh, I say forthcoming, that's a little bit uh, premature. I haven't quite started. <laughs> I've got two more volumes of my mindfulness meditation book, which are just due out. <laughs> it's forthcoming in my mind. So there we are. My bestseller, let's say. Um, so the first challenge would be getting to bed. So why don't we have some interaction? If you wish to, don't feel you have to hear. But if you want to say, yes, that's me, please. Getting to bed. Who finds it difficult to get to bed? Just getting to bed can be challenging. You're sort of wired, you're tired, you know you should. Okay. Getting to sleep. And I don't mind if you put your hands up for all of them. So that can be a problem. You know, you, you, you got to bed perhaps really nice and early, but you somehow just can't do it. Staying asleep. Yeah, you're asleep. yeah and you wake up, you go, oh, no, I've lost it. Yeah. And waking up fresh, which, of course, is perhaps a result of all the previous ones. Mm. <clears throat> I haven't got having too much sleep on there, um, but uh, sometimes that is a problem for people. Now, um, I'm going to suggest that we start with a practice, uh, a mindful practice. I promise you I haven't got too many cute animal pictures in, in this. <laughs> um, I want to start with a practice that I do with students when I've taught the course in Better Sleep, which I just started to do before the university pulled the programme, sadly. But um, some colleges are, I'm happy to say, picking up on it. Um, and when I have taught it, this practice is something that um, when people have really given it a go, I know that they found it beneficial. Now, I thought we'd do it, instead of me saying why it's beneficial, as it were, and then doing it, let's do it the other way around. So we give it a go, and then we can sort of brainstorm together in ways that you feel it might be beneficial. 
Okay, so I'm going to introduce a little sleep program, a sleep practice. Please feel very free not to do it. You know, I want you just to be comfortable. If you just want to sort of stare at the ceiling or think about things, that's fine. So um, I'm going to sit down. If I just sit here, I don't think it alters our technology very much, does it? No. Okay. It'll just be easier for me to lead sitting down. So the mindful sleep practice, um, what we're going to do, if you so wish, we're going to just head inward. So you might want to close your eyes if you feel comfortable to do that. Um, I haven't actually asked the lovely people organising this. Can we dim the lights? Would that be possible? No, we can't. That's all right, because um, you can practice this anywhere. <coughs> people who do, I, I work with one-to-one uh, -one or in groups, sometimes their only place they can practice it is in the restroom, um, in the toilets at work or something. Uh, so the lights are going to be fine. And, that, and it doesn't matter either for this practice. This is the first half. We're going to do the second half later in the session. So what we're going to do is we're going to go inward, maybe close in eyes, and just see if we can spot anything that feels a little bit sleepy in there. Okay, so let's just do that. So I'm going to give us a couple of minutes. So just settling into your seat. Um, can be nice to give ourselves a bit of time just to settle and arrive and change gear from being out there to in here. bit of time to arrive in our bodies, in our beings, on the seat. And maybe beginning to feel the weight of our body dropping down into the ground. And here in this space, I'm going to be silent for a minute or two and just a little bit of time to see, is there anything here in me right now that feels a little sleepy, a little tired, a little dreamy or drifty? Just taking some time for that. Now, in a minute, I'm going to ask you if you have a, a word to describe or a metaphor, perhaps, to describe. So it may be a, a bodily sensation you had or something you noticed your mind was a bit different or something that was a bit non-conceptual, a bit hard to describe. So I'll just give you a moment to see if you can find a descriptor for your sleepy feeling, if you found one. And then in your own time, just finding your way back. Maybe first of all, leaving your eyes closed a little longer if they've been closed and just becoming aware of the light that's coming from the environment. Having a little stretch, if you wish. <clears throat> and just gently in your own time, coming back into the room. Mm. Ah, put your hand up if you're feeling a little bit more relaxed at least after that yeah quite a few people good good did anybody find some sleepy feelings maybe just hands up yeah did anybody find none in fact you got more awake yes okay we'll come to that so don't worry and that's part of the practice uh, an essential part obviously Okay, so some of you did spot some sleepy feelings. So may I just ask, uh, I know we have a mic, but let's not spend time with it just now. Just a quick little response. What did you find? What did you notice? How did you know it was sleepy? Was there anybody had a body sensation type of sleepy? Yeah? What? I had um, sort of softness around my arms. Ah, yeah, yeah. Anybody else have that? Something different? The breathing, your breathing slowed, lovely. Yes, that's a sort of sleepy thing, isn't it? Heavy limbs, yeah, yeah. Um, and also feel, feel free to include a metaphor or maybe something with your mind. 
Mm. Pillowy, exactly. I was waiting for something like that. It was spongy, pillowy. Yeah, okay, lovely. Sometimes we don't have a very clear word for it. Would anybody say it was quite hard to describe? Don't, yeah, a few nods there. So I, the interesting thing is I would do this practice. I did a four-week course. And on the first session, people found it hard to name them. By week four, I was getting wonderful metaphors and quite a lot of uh, description. So when I was practicing, when I was teaching myself, what I noticed is I was becoming more and more expert in spotting a sleepy feeling. And now I'm you know, much better at it. I feel like the ancient mariner looking out onto the ocean. You know, I can see a sort of sleepy feeling just way over there, just coming towards me. Yeah. <laughs> so it is actually an expertise, believe it or not, I believe, and something to practice. So how do you think it helps? What do you think the benefits may be of this particular practice? Well, for a start, who enjoyed it? Yeah, okay. And if you've practiced mindfulness before, you might find it a little bit easier even than doing a mindfulness meditation, just possibly, just trying to feel sleepy. Uh, any ideas? Of course, I've got my bullet points ready, but anybody immediately think, oh, yeah, that could really help because, yes. I think it's reassuring to think, oh, yeah, I, I can go to sleep. Absolutely, I can go to sleep. That's the bottom line. Our bodies know how to sleep and they want to sleep. Uh, what's gone wrong, if anything has, has gone wrong, is that you know, things get in the way. And all we need to do, the all, is just to relearn what we deeply already know. Yeah, it's that along the lines of what you're yeah. catching there. Yeah. So to reconnect with these sleepy feelings. So did you want to say more? Just instead of worrying, oh, I'm never going to go to sleep and yeah. brain thinking about things. Yeah. It Yes, you know, you've stepped out on the path already. Yeah. Anything else anybody thought of when I said how might it help as a little practice? The same point where it shuts out distractions. Focusing on this particular. Yeah, actually, it helps you practice doing that, doesn't it? Like your breathing slowed. Oh, there's my breathing slowed. I must be coming a little sleepy. Almost the other way around. Yeah. Benefits of sleepy practice. Here we go. Does anybody feel like this when you're trying to sleep? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So basically, it's got so many benefits, this little practice. Um, one thing is it's going to calm your system if you're a bit over, over busy, over wired, hyper alert, our nervous system. It's going to help. I think some of you experienced that even just now in those couple of minutes. It's just automatically calming. So this is going to really help the getting to bed people. So if you can do this before you go to bed, if you can do it during the day, I like to say think a bit around mealtime, so you've got three times a day, something like that. It's going to just help calming. Yeah. Um, sorry, just before I go into the next one, uh, put your hand up if you would agree from your own experience, from what you've just done, it would perhaps calm you a little. The old nod, yeah, yeah, it's calming, good. Now, here's the big thing, and this is what I think we've started looking at. It helps to initiate a sleep cycle. It helps to initiate the pathway into sleep. So in a sense, by practicing this, you're practicing setting out on that sleepy pathway, which sounds crazy, doesn't it? Why do I need to practice going to sleep? But quite evidently, if we're not sleeping as much as we wish, we, maybe there's something our nervous system needs to know. We might know it mentally, but does our body remember? So we're reminding ourselves. So this is like learning a language. I'm just learning Italian eventually in my life. I got there from apps, you know, and I have to keep practicing it, else I forget. Uh, so until it becomes absolutely sort of soaked through me and I'm fluent in Italian one day, perhaps, I'm going to need practice. And when we've um, lost the hang of sleeping easily and enjoyably all the time, um, we need to just practice. That's help helping us get to sleep because we're getting into the main sleep cycle. Would anybody say from the little practice we just did that they had a sense of that? Oh, yeah, here's, here's a sleepy thing. I could perhaps follow that. Hmm. Next one. Um, did anybody find themselves just daydreaming when, when I said, look at sleepy feelings? And you might have thought, oops, I'm not doing quite what Elizabeth said. I'm just daydreaming. Yeah. Well, maybe daydreaming is part of getting to sleep. <laughs> maybe it's what the mind does as it begins to let go. We let ourselves daydream. Yeah. In fact, I'm doing another uh, presentation this afternoon on meditation. Um, hence the book, because I'm using the book for that. So yeah, daydreaming, really important. Uh, it's, it's processing time, it's letting go, it's moving away from the things I've got to do right now. 
Yeah. So I think that when I wake up at night, and of course I still do sometimes, have a, I'm sort of nudged awake, it'll be by my daydreams. It'll be by the fact I haven't had enough daydreaming time. Again, just indicate, nod, wave, smile, whatever, if you feel you don't get much daydreaming time in a day. Yeah? Yeah? Contrarily, put your hand up if you've had some good daydreaming already today. Yeah, great. Yeah. <laughs> so if we don't daydream, our daydreams will come and wake us up at night. Has anybody found that to be true? That you're lying awake and you're thinking about the price of bananas or the colour of the wallpaper and you think, why am I awake just thinking about this rubbish? Well, that, for me, that's part of the process of going to sleep. Just... So who's speaking? I, I... Oh, sorry. Oh, there we go, yeah. That's part of the process of going to sleep. Mm. It's sort of shutting down the activity and it starts from being real. Yeah. Being things I want to do or things I've got to do in the conflict of those. Yeah. Moving into yeah. completely random... Um, Imaginary thoughts. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And that, yes. So our mind begins to orient to, to dream worlds. And daydreaming is again the pathway to that. Sometimes when people meditate, they get dream images. And, you know, when you go to sleep, just to let yourself be daydreamy is a great way. So you're actually allowing yourself to daydream um, in that practice and noticing, oh, I'm daydreaming now. My mind is relaxing a bit. And finally, yes, it just invites and familiarizes deep rest, which is, again, it's the deep rest in particularly our deep sleep, which is helping us wake up fresh. So there's a practice. I've just advertised it on four different levels. Yeah, <laughs> I wish you joy in practicing that. Hopefully some of you will take it up, especially because I want to add um, the, the last bit about what happens if we're totally awake when we try to do it. Okay, um, the nervous system. So let me just say a little bit about that. Um, some of you here may be neuroscientists, so forgive the brief and uh, obviously simplified thing. So we have our lovely nervous system operating during the day, and sometimes we get a sort of energy to do something like, oh, I want to go to that next presentation, or oh, I don't want to miss lunch, you know, and that energy comes up, and basically it's a fight or flight survival instinct because yes let me get the food or yes I want to do that sort of refined version of course if we go over this is called um, it, unfortunately it's called the window of tolerance somebody pointed out it might be better to call it manageable window that was it uh, a manageable window so some that's a sort of manageable yes I've got to meet someone I must get there a bit of stress perhaps but it's manageable but sometimes we go over that and it's too much. It just feels really, I've got too much uh, to do. And it doesn't feel comfortable or good anymore. Uh, put your hands up if you've had that recently. Yeah, so that, that's very often that can happen. And then that can sometimes stay in our system. And of course, that's going to help. Very, very difficult to sleep because we are effectively like um, as if we are in our caveman part of our brain. We're, we're hyperactivated to actually to a threat. Now, it may only be a threat of giving a talk tomorrow or a threat of too much to do or something, but it's a little bit like in your cave, you've got tigers prowling around your cave or bears prowling around your cave. That's for your nervous system. It doesn't know the difference between having to catch a train tomorrow or a tiger wandering around your cave. So um, it's not going to be easy to sleep because safety is going to be a huge element of sleep. So does anybody find they're just about getting to sleep and you get what I would call a spike of awakeness where you go, Woof, I'm suddenly wide awake. Yeah, well, there we go. It's very easy to get stuck there and think, oh, I've lost it now. Yeah, actually, it's just your, it's a security announcement. It's your nervous system going, are there any bears out there? Are there any tigers? You know, just checking. So you just say, thank you, nervous system. I think I'm okay. Yeah. So it's good to know what that's happening. Now, the other thing that can happen is our nervous system can just say, Put on the brake. I've got too much going on. Does anybody know what that's called? It's not fight or flight. It's freeze. Yeah, if you, perhaps you've heard of freeze. Um, and this is where we can just feel really low, really depressed. We know we should get on with things, but we can't. The nervous system response. So we've probably had some freeze in our system around certain issues. Oh, yeah, we can't do it. So when we're sleeping, we need to feel uh, safe and comfortable, um, you know, trying to sleep and be overactivated are incompatible. 
behaviors. I have a, a dog, I, I'm interested in dog training. In fact, the Mindful Puppy Diaries are on YouTube, are worth watching. And um, if you want, if I wanted to stop barking too much, the incompatible behavior is to give her a, something to chew because she can't do both. I love that concept of an incompatible behavior. It's a sort of sneaky concept. So it's the same with sleep. So we really, really need to find ways to uh, really calm our system. So um, having bears or tigers around your cave, you know. So this practice, as we said, it's, it's an entry into the sleep cycle. It's going to help us get into the first sleep cycle. It's going to help us calm. Um, so getting back to sleep, I'm going to introduce a, a second little practice shortly, which is going to help us if we're try, struggling to get back to sleep. And I'm just going to explain it on the sleep cycle. So our entry into sleep is this intermediate, very, very fascinating place called the hypnagogic, where all sorts of wonderful things happen. Does anybody, when they're trying to sleep, sometimes get little sort of uh, dream images floating in? Or, or very weird little body sensations, or you sort of slip, or things like that. Yeah, so this is you just being aware that you're heading into sleep. And if you can hang around in the hypnagogic, just sort of somehow practice that. You can practice it by lying on your back on the floor with your knees up, because your body knows you're not in bed, but sometimes you can get quite sleepy. You can really begin to see that transition and realize it's one of the most fascinating places you can ever be, the hypnagogic. So getting to know the hypnagogic is really helpful. So the sleepy practice may help. But what we need to also do is we've just got ourselves into the sleep cycle and then we go into a, a sort of deep sleep. Uh, first of all, light sleep, deep sleep, all of which have different amazing things they're doing to your body. You can read up, you know, light sleep, you've got memory, consolidation, sp sleep spindles, they're called. And deep sleep are the deeply nourishing things. It's all wonderful to read, these lovely things that happen when you're asleep. And then you go into your dream sleep, which again is very important therapeutically. And then actually at the very end, you come into a mini awakening. So a mini awakening will happen at the end of every sleep cycle, roughly 90 minutes. I say roughly, because I try to measure and be aware of my sleep cycles in the night. And they're, they're not always 90 minutes, so, but roughly. So at the end of every one, you have a mini awakening. So you always wake up, but most of the time you won't remember it. Yeah, but if you are remembering and you're coming awake, and sometimes we need to go to the bathroom or we're just awake, what's really important is to remember that it's actually really positive. <laughs> it's a it's a sort of just evolution, just saying here I am, I'm asleep. Maybe I need to check if there's any bears or tigers prowling around outside. You know, something like that. And um, to be really aware that many awakenings, even slightly prolonged awakenings, are fine. Maybe I need to be awake for a little bit. Maybe I haven't had enough daydreaming time. But as long as you're resting, actually your body's getting nourishment. So I think sometimes, is that reassuring for anybody? And also that, you know, historically we used to sleep in two phases anyway, the biphasal sleep pattern. If you interested in Samuel Pepys, you know, he talks about it, the biphasal. I think there are lots of sailors' songs um, about or folk songs around, you know, what did you do before your second sleep? Because they used to open the pubs. It was a good time for milking cows. It was a good time for making babies, you know. It's just what you did before your second sleep. So the uh, it's well known. And in a sense, we've only tried to sleep eight hours solid, probably since electricity and coffee, I'd say. So quite recent in our evolution. So if you are waking up and you're sort of finding you're wide awake, just think you're very deeply attuned to your genetic conditioning, you know, good, good for you. And if you, were in, if you were meditating in a Tibetan monastery, you'd be, oh, well done, you're beautifully aware in the night. So you have to think there's some sort of interesting change of attitude we could have to our little awakenings in the night. But what will also help is if you think, well, I can get back to sleep if I really want to. So hence the sleep practice. Now here, what we're trying to do is to sort of get through the mini awakening and just remind our nervous system, oh, I, yes, I know about... I know about the parasympathetic. I know about how to just get out of that activated sympathetic arousal. I know how to get back through parasympathetic, um, relaxing, resting, digesting. So that's also what we're practicing when we're practicing a sleep practice. I do need to say a little bit about sleep hygiene, but not a lot, because this sort of challenges all of us to say, well, how do we live our lives? And I always say that your next bet, your, your good night's sleep starts from the moment you wake up in the morning. 
in different ways that's true. So it's really outside the scope today, but I want to introduce you to sleep pressure. Has anybody heard of sleep pressure? A chemical called adenosine. Um, so this is the only the second little dog one because this is one of the puppies that I, this is me holding a puppy who just looks so deep, beautifully asleep. So sleep pressure is actually um, a chemical that builds up from the moment we wake up in the morning. So it clears out in the night and in the morning your adenosine levels start to rise, they start to build. So adenosine is your sort of tiredness or sort of weariness level, if you like, the, the level of, of uh, adenosine in your system is building. And the more you do like an interactive day like today, and your adenosine is going to be growing. By the end you go, oh, it's a long day, yeah? <laughs> so there we are, sleep pressure. So your next night's sleep starts from the moment you wake up in the morning is actually chemically true as well as in every other sense. Um, so basically, to do your sleepy practice during the day, you're also in a way tuning in to natural sleepiness that's growing. Tiredness, sleepiness, yeah. Um, and I'm sorry to tell you that adenosine is cancelled out by cough, ca uh, caffeine, yeah. Bad news perhaps, yeah, but it really is. So um, I'm not going to say more about sleep hygiene, but you've probably heard, you know, coffee's not that good. Any sort of caffeine. Uh, not so good. Uh, so if you're struggling to give it up, I would say at least don't have it in the afternoon. But if you're really struggling with your sleep, then think very seriously about your caffeine intake. Um, it blocks you feeling adenosine. Bad news for some? Yeah. Okay, um, it's also quite good to know your chronotype. Uh, it's quite a fun thing to ask at a party. Chronotype are you, you know? You say, what? But are you an owl or a lark? Yeah, there is such a thing in genetically as morning ness and evening ness, interestingly enough. Who thinks they're an owl? T tend to, yeah, who would say they're more of a lark? Yeah, who's larkish? Owlish. <laughs> I think we have degrees, yeah. Um, so it's quite good to know your own chronotype because basically you're probably needing to run on the wrong time zone. Most of us are. If I have to go out in the night, this wrong time zone for me. And I have to recover. I have to recover. Um, some of you will hate mornings, and yet you have to get up in a sense. Uh, there's wonderful studies done showing that teenagers, if you let them uh, sleep an hour longer, all oh, their exams shoot up, you know, exam results, I mean, shoot up positively. So it really is the thing. And uh, yeah, so just again, uh, be aware of your chronotype. I don't have more to say on that just here. Yeah, you'll probably keep coming across this, you must sleep for eight hours. It's got to be, if you're not sleeping for eight hours, you're underslept. Has anybody heard? This is a very common thing to hear. So the, the, of course, it's good to have a general eight hour thing, but I would say if you're not sleeping for your full eight hours, roughly eight hours, uh, and it, for a few nights, you're on the wrong time zone because of your chronotype, you've had to stay out late or you've had to get up early. Just don't worry, we've got such a resilient sleep system. I think that's what I really want to stress. We are so resilient. And if we're building sleep practice into our lives, we're extra resilient. And we want a system that can have a coffee every now and then in the afternoon or can drink some alcohol and be okay. Um, we want that kind of or dark chocolate, you know. We want that sort of system which allows it. So um, I would say really let yourself nap if you're short of sleep and you haven't had your right and you want to or do the sleepy meditation. Now, so what we're going to do now is um, do the second half of the sleepy practice, the sleepy uh, meditation practice. Um, yeah, and before I start, uh, just to say I'm doing well for time, happy to say. Does anybody want to say anything, ask anything, just before I go on to this last section? I've said quite a bit. Yes, please. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I, uh, the question, in case you didn't hear, the, the gentleman saying, being you know more mature, more mature in eight years, we, you you now notice your awake point in the sleep cycle. But but you then go back to sleep quite easily. But you're noticing. Yeah. Yeah. No. So you're noticing your sleep. Fantastic. I notice. I even write them down. Uh, I, you know, I, I sometimes I like to see what are they because what do they say? Ninety minutes. I've just had one for an hour. That's interesting, you know. 
so I, I measure my sleep cycles. I enjoy it. I just feel, oh, I'm more sort of, I'm making friends with my sleep self. This is how I see it, yeah? We want to make friends. With, who feels their sleep self's a bit of an enemy? You don't like your sleep self. It robs you of lovely sleep. Yeah, so the process what I'm suggesting, a mindful approach, is to make friends with our sleep self and to give it what it needs. If it means, if it doesn't want coffee after lunch, you know, because it struggles later, be kind to your sleep self. So one way to be kind to anybody is to take an interest in them and just take a real fascination in your sleep cycle, yeah? And how you come out of it, even start noticing. You see how passionate I am about this. I get so excited. Just start noticing your hypnopompic moments coming out of sleep, if you can. Oh, how did that feel as I lifted out of that sleep cycle? Oh, how do I know I'm going back into the sleep cycle? Oh yeah, that's a sleepy feeling. I remember it now, ah. Oh. Yeah, like that. So you just get, yes. Mm. Back to sleep, but if you are woken at a different point in the sleep cycle, yes, either you know by somebody else getting up for it, yes, or, yes, uh, can you apply the same? Can you have confidence? In yes, the same sleep practice and be confident that you're absolutely. Back to uh, probably, yes, absolutely. The thing that will go wrong is what we call in mindfulness a second arrow, where you, you bring another layer of worry, like, oh, no, that's happened again, and last time it happened, I didn't manage, and how inconsiderate, and uh, or just worry, oh, here I am again. So if we bring another layer of feelings about things, it's usually the second arrow that stops us sleeping, to be honest. And then it's very, very good to well, perhaps do this practice that we're about to do. Um, or you might need to do, I do meditate, if I'm unsettled or upset, I'll do a little meditation to help me settle. So that, yes, one more question and then we'll sleep, the other sleep practice. My son also finds it very hard because he's nine years old. Is there anything specifically aimed at the children that do? The sleepy practice, he'd be so good at it. And also he'd probably be quite aware of dreams. So in the morning, what did you dream? Just focus a lot on dreams. And then, you know, fiction before you go to sleep or audio books. My mum's struggling so much with sleep. And mum, get to use Audible, you know, you know get audio books. She's just managing the technology there. Shall we try it? Because this is actually, um, so uh, the second half of this is really important, especially if you're going, well, I didn't even feel any sleepy feelings. Things are that bad, yeah? Or oh, how annoying. So what we're going to do is we're going to... Um, allow ourselves to uh, just settle again. And here, um, we're just going to notice for a moment, you can close your eyes and do this. I'm going to ask you to notice what it's like to be awake. Now, we looked at sleepy feelings before. See if you can spot the flavor, the sense, the felt sense, the, the feeling of awakeness. Maybe it's got a, an image like a like light, a bright light or a sort of buzzing energy, electric. So here we are, we're just noticing awake now. This is how I really learned this practice. I started with awake because it was awake that was in between me and sleep. So. <laughs> In a way, let's just say hello a minute to awake. Let's spend a moment just saying, oh, hello, this is awake, awakeness. So like anything that wants our attention and is sort of not going away, sometimes if we just give it our full attention, unconditional, here is awakeness. This is my awake me. Here it is. We Really let ourselves be awake. And now um, you may find quite naturally that you're also aware that there's some sleepiness or tiredness there. Just it's worth scanning, just having a little look. Is there anything here that's actually a little sleepy? Let's just move our attention uh, across to a sleepy, sleepy feeling. Perhaps there's something there. It's a bit sleepy, and, and if so, let's give that some real quality attention. This is our sleep self, making friends with that.
and you can stay there if you're enjoying it. But if you've got very much awake feelings, then just allow yourself just like a pendulum to go back to awake. Uh, you can choose here. You might want to stay with sleepy feelings or go back and give awake some more attention and be with that. And just notice where you want to go, awake or sleepy. The minute one comes to mind, just if a wake pops in, then give it some attention. Just assume that what knocks on the door wants your attention. And then just in your own time, we're going to bring this to a close. It just very gently and gradually Take a moment to absorb, to feel yourself in the room. And then coming back into the room when you're ready, just gently. Am I imagining a sleepy feeling in the room? Yeah, I feel like, yeah. Hmm. So I'm really curious. Now, this is uh, noticing two different things. So earlier we did notice the sleepy feelings. So perhaps that helped just now. So did anybody find they did find some sleepy feelings? Yeah. yeah. And then who found that they did also notice awake? You could do that. Yeah. So then the... I'm going to ask the third question. Did anybody notice a kind of, you could pendulum, you could pendulate, you could make that little, oh, here's, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm really curious, who, and I would really love a little clear signal here, who did make a, notice a pendulum from, um, here I am with a wake, and oh, here's a sleepy feeling. Just see who, who that happened for. Yeah, lovely. And having had a sleepy feeling, who noticed, oh, there's a wake again, and you went back to a wake. Did anybody have that? Okay, who had none of that at all? And you're thinking, oh, Elizabeth, what are you on about? Okay, <laughs> fair enough. Okay, <laughs> maybe uh, check, find, you know, there's always a curious reason why, maybe in a moment, yeah. So let's just um, get a hang of this then. So here we are, what we're doing here is we're practicing that re-entry from the sleep cycle. We're, we're practicing, in a nervous system terms, the parasympathetic, I didn't introduce that, but with the nervous system, we have the sympathetic arousal and the parasympathetic um, resting, digesting. And we're actually practicing that, which is moving quite comfortably. I'm awake. Oh, and actually I, I found some sleepiness. And it's almost like a cycle. And here I'm nice and sleepy. And now, oh, I'm awake again. You're almost like practicing your mini awakenings and you're getting your, new, your nervous system really happy with going from one to the other. Does that make sense? It's absolutely, I'm so excited about this. I want to get it known because it's so important. Why wouldn't we practice it? We're activating a healthy parasympathetic nervous system response. Yeah. Just taking time to daydream, I said this earlier, you know. Um, it's also going to help us if we just go into daydreaming. Is that what happened for you, just daydreaming? Yeah, yeah well, great. Well, I would say that was sleepiness. You just get, yeah, and it, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, just taking, uh, so this is a little summary, yes. Yeah, so, how to get your parasympathetic nervous system really happy, relaxing. Um, I think I made these points earlier. Sleepy meditation. You know, nature can really help as well. Nature walks, doing dreamy things, washing up dreamily. <laughs> take, take, offer to wash up. You know, it's just so nice. You can sit and sort of daydream about things. Yeah. Uh, so my, my, my just gorgeous, I love this beautiful uh, chimp. Uh, so, you know, really your body knows how to sleep and it wants to sleep. Uh, so my conclusion, really, really give yourself time to practice those. And your body's actually just relearning what it deeply, deeply knows. We all know that. If we didn't, we'd all be dead. You know, sleep is that important. So we're just getting to know, befriending our sleep self. Reconnecting our entry into sleep. Uh, that's the end. <laughs> that's the end of my presentation. I just wanted to leave time for questions. 
And also to say, please do stay in touch. I've put some books out. They're not, unfortunately, to take away. Um, but if you want to have a little look, and I'm doing a presentation at three in a different room, and they're also on sale in the main tent. Um, but you know, please feel free if you're interested to know more. I haven't had, obviously, there's so much to say. Um, and even a course on sleep this, this autumn, just a little advert for you. And alumni, of course, you get a massive discount. So there we are. Um, yeah, but we do, I, I believe we do, in fact, just have a few minutes for, for questions. So um, would anybody like to ask anything or comment on anything I've said? Please, yeah. Oh, I'd be very happy to share them. Um, I think the alumni, yeah, the alumni group will do that. Thank you. Yes, yeah. Um, yes, the, the lady. Please, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Age will affect your chronotype. Yes, it'll affect how the degree of morningness, eveningness. Um, hence, you know, the gentleman saying in, in your 80s, you might be f have different difference. So we have to be constantly befriending our sleep self, being kind to it. If your sleep self changes its patterns or its ways, because you're on holiday, because you're sleeping in a tent, whatever it is, um, because you've got a busy job, which is forcing something, it's like that. We, we need to be very flexible and kind and actually adapt what we do to help our sleep self. Maybe I need to nap a bit more. For example, I love naps. I've got a friend who says, if you want to change the world, take a nap. <laughs> I love that. Yes. Um, is it possible to combine this um, meditation with, uh, say, other meditations uh, to relax the body, such as breathing a meditation? Absolutely. I would totally recommend meditating anyway. Um, for that, um, my, th my third book in this series, which will be out next summer, um, the second one's out in December, is actually focusing on, on using sleepiness in your meditation to help your meditation. It's almost the other way around. <laughs> Here I've been using meditation to help sleepiness. But um, Oceans Within, just write to me or join my network, you'll get uh, heading up. Because again, that's so special. And um, many, many meditation teachers will sort of try to sort of say, move away from sleepiness, we want to be aware. And I'm saying, well, it's actually a big part of our experience that we don't want to negate. Let's bring it in and help our meditation deepen, help us relax quickly through sleepy feelings. And I would just say to that as well, you know, if we get used to trying to sort of stop our feel sleepy feelings, um, I wonder what the effect is. For example, has anybody been tired after lunch and decided to have some sort of stimulant to get through that after lunch slot? Maybe everybody in the room, yeah? Yeah, so actually, what, what message are we giving to ourselves for the, for the evening? That we're actually suppressing sleepy feelings. Do we want to really teach our system to suppress our sleepy feelings? So maybe instead we can do a sleepy meditation or a meditation, which is just a meditation instead, which might give us a little break and then we've got natural energy. It's a thought, isn't it? And have a banana or something. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, yes, the question here. Um, snoring and sleep apnea. Yes. Disrupt yes. 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 Snoring and sleep, so, sleep apnea. Sorry. Yeah, snoring and sleep snoring apnea. Snoring and sleep apnea. Yeah. Anything to say about that? Thank you. Yes, 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 yes. Definitely um, meditation with um, very easy breathing. Uh, you know, uh, there's sort of some breathing things we can do to help calm our breathing. Uh, that's really important um, with sleep apnea because it's a fear of, of breathing. Also, it may be related to experience of sleep paralysis. Uh, where, you've, where you, you're aware your body's turning off and you can't move because your muscles, when you're asleep, are turned off. And if that's the case, just write to me and I'll make some suggestions because that can be a very scary experience until you know what's happening. Snoring, um, maybe just try to enjoy the musicality of your partner's <laughs> snores. Um, yes, um, earplugs, if it's bothering you, if you're bothered by that. Um, um, but again, you know, use your little um, mini awakenings to just calm a little bit. So, see, any muscles here? Can I just calm? Yeah. Mm -hmm. A brief answer. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and I know that people um, would probably need to finish soon. Maybe I could take these two questions and then finish. Otherwise, you're stuck, aren't you? And you can't easily get away. But if you do need to leave, please do. So, I've got a gentleman raising his hand there, and there was somebody else, just a few. Uh, uh, yes, here. Good. We'll have the. Yes. Sorry. We're, let, let, gentleman at the back first, and then we'll finish with you. Yeah, he's uh, thank you. Um, I know you touched on it with sleep hygiene, but I was wondering, is there, 
much research out there about this sort of the impact of these over the last oh, 15 goodness. years, Absolutely. particularly younger, younger. Yes, uh, yes. Yes, because I said we couldn't touch on it. Blue light and light, yeah? Now, you would be amazed how sensitive some people are to light as opposed to others. You know, you can live with somebody who just doesn't bother, light doesn't bother them, bother them at all. And others' lights are really sensitive to, to light. So one of the things is about sleep is to make sure that absolutely you get good fresh morning light. That's a really, really good thing to do. And um, here I am on my um, Kindle uh, using, I use that for reading the black background with white. And I know it's the app, but I find it quite relaxing. And it's better, actually, than having your website light on. And then I've also recently bought a red bulb. Absolutely love it. I loved it so much, I've put one in my bathroom so I can have a bath with a red bulb. So really, really take care of light. And absolutely, blue light gives you actually a sleep hangover for several days. So really be careful of screen time. Thank you for that. Final, final question. You had um, the dream cycle at the end of the yes, sleep yes. cycle. And yes. is it sort of a question, the dream wakes you up and there's such relief that the dream wasn't real that it helps you to get back to sleep? Well, you might be disappointed that the dream's not real. Yeah? <laughs> Nightmare then. <laughs> um, I would say um, befriending your dreams is part of befriending your sleep self. So absolutely, fascination by any aspect of your sleep is going to be really positive and helpful. So I, yeah, and if you're having nightmares, then, then it's time to really reframe that and, and, and become fascinated by what the dream elements are trying to help us feel. If it's coming into your dreams, it's because it wants to be felt, it wants to be noticed. Dreams are like love letters from your self-conscious, yeah? And if you're not responding to them, they might get pretty angry and unpleasant because you're saying, well, you're not listening to me. So we want to start really um, relating to our dreams and, you know, with that welcome, loving attitude and uh, see if you can write a few love letters back. Make notes of your dreams. <laughs> Good. I would talk all day about dreams if I could. So I think we should stop. But um, thank you so much for being such a lovely, engaged uh, audience. And um, as I say, um, if you want to know a little bit more, this is on meditation and my approach to meditation. It'd be lovely to see you. It's at three o'clock today. I'm sure you're all got signed up for fascinating other talks, so not to worry. But that's the uh, that's the uh, a bit of reading from the book. And um, do feel free to glance on your way out. Um, if you want to pay for them, um, the front desk um, in the in the in the main hall, and I'll happily sign, of course. Yeah. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.